This is the Veteran Woman Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to empowering, inspiring, and encouraging veteran women to overcome their struggles and celebrate their successes. Now, here's your host, the one and only Ariel Renal. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Veteran Woman Podcast. I am your host, Ariel Renal, and today I have Shanice Collins with me in studio, I guess you want to say, or on Skype, however you, <laughs> you want to word it. But I have her with me, and I'm so excited to speak with her. I know we've kind of chased each other back and forth, and now we're finally on the line. So how are you doing today, Shanice? I am doing great. It's been a beautiful day and it's a nice way to end my day by talking about what I love to do. Yes, yes. And tell us, what is it that you love to do? Well, I still work in the corporate sector, but I also have my own business where I coach women and predominantly just to get over their fears of presenting, public speaking, just get rid of the negative self-talk so that they can move on and actually apply for those jobs that they don't feel they're capable of doing, just move, move them past their fears and the obstacles and help them to realize that they do have something to offer. They have great skills. They just need to polish up a few things and they can accomplish great things. And that sounds very helpful because I know as a veteran coming out of the military, it's kind of like, it seems like it's a lot like corporate going into entrepreneurship. It's that yeah. major transition and a lifestyle change. So I know a lot of people need that. We may not even realize we need that, but it's needed right. to, like you say, polish the skills and to even recognize the skills that we've learned over a amount of time, whether we're in corporate or in the military or whatever through life, because we gain so much experience and just knowing yes. how to translate that. I noticed that one of one of your programs talks about presenting, being a powerful presenter. And correct yes. me if I wrong if I got the title wrong. I apologize. But can you tell no, us more correct. about that? Yeah. In essence, I think a lot of people have a misconception of presentation. Presenting is not just about the slides. In my world, I feel there's a total presentation package. So that would encompass, of course, the slides. So your material, you should be a subject matter expert in whatever you're presenting on. However, you still need to look a certain way. So you should know your audience and that way you can address accordingly. You should know or have an idea of where you will be presenting. So you'll know how much space you can occupy as you present. You don't have to stand near the, the slides where they're being displayed. You can walk around the room. That helps you connect with your audience. And a big, big mistake that people often make is their body language doesn't match their verbal message. So they're sending mixed messages and the audience is not sure what to focus on. Should I be focusing on what she's saying or what she's doing? Because Ooh. if you're saying that something is exciting, but your body language is not displaying excitement, your voice is not displaying excitement, then they're not really going to believe that it's exciting. It seems like and if you, when you're talking about yeah. something exciting, it would make you excited and that that would yeah, but correspond. It's, it doesn't always happen that way. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, you know, nerves can get the best of a lot of people. True. And just, I think people don't recognize that everything does need to match. So while they say it, they feel, well, I said it. So don't they, don't they know I meant it was exciting? No, they didn't feel that you were excited or they didn't feel that it was a big deal because you didn't express it in that manner. Got it. Got it. So you said you're, you're still in corporate and I know you own your own business. Yes. Are you planning on transitioning out of corporate to full-time entrepreneur? Yes, that is my goal. I do have an 11 year old daughter and I am preparing of course, to get her to college at, at some point. But I have decided that, you know, there's more to life that I can be doing and that could be um, doing it on my own. So I am working on a plan and determining when would be the best time for me to venture off into just an entre entrepreneur status. Right, right. So how, and you have what, 26 years in corporate? I have, um, this would be the start of my 22nd year. 22nd. Okay. So mm -hmm. 22 years and over two decades <laughs> yeah. in corporate. Wow. Wow. Corporate is like so foreign to me. I've never worked in corporate 
And I don't even think I have a desire to, but I do respect Mm -hmm. those that do. And again, like I said, it's kind of parallel with military as far as transitioning out of corporate or military into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide, like what gave you the courage to make the decision to transition? Because I know that's a first step is saying, okay, I, I got more that I want to do. So let's set a plan. So how did you come about setting that plan? It actually really comes from things happening in your life can make you make decisions that you probably should have made a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And we've all faced tragedy or some type of obstacle. But um, last year, in about 32 days, I lost three members of my immediate family. And that was a big blow because it was my mom. It was my grandmother and it was my uncle. And it just made me sit back and say, you know, this is clear that life is not promised. You're here today. You're gone tomorrow. What else am I supposed to be doing? Am I am I just supposed to be doing something for someone else as far as working for someone else? Or is there something I can be doing that that I feel that I'm making a true impact And that's what led me to start the coaching business. And it also led me to um, write and publish a book last year because I was trying to get through my grief and I went to counseling. And it just stirred up so many emotions of, I have so much more I can offer the world and I don't know how much time I have to offer it. So now is the time for me to just go for it. And that really takes confidence. And I know that's one of the things that you help women with is building confidence, through coaching, through even teaching them how to present themselves accordingly, like you said, with presentations or, and presentation, like you said, it's more than just PowerPoint slides. It's how you carry yourself, how you match your emotions and your body language with what you're saying and, and your branding. It's matching all of that as your presentation. And I know confidence is definitely a big thing with that. And I noticed in your, you have a program called Passport to Ooze Confidence. I really love that. I love that. The logo, I love the name. And it says, and become a powerful presenter. So can you tell us more about that program for anybody who may be listening that feels like yes. they want to go into that field of being a presenter or a speaker? Yeah, it is um, a 12-week coaching program. And it's one-on-one. It's not group coaching. So all the sessions would be um, with me personally. It's virtual, so we don't have to worry about you figuring out how to carve out time to get to another location. Everything is done. We could do it via Skype or um, conference call, whichever one works best for the client. There's a ton of material that I go over, but a lot of it is just to, first we have to find out, is there any validity in those fears that you have of speaking? Do you have Mm -hmm. that fear because you truly have a fear or do you have that fear because You've heard other people have it or someone has said, well, you appear to be scared when you present. So finding out the root cause of the fear, also helping people just get rid of the negative self-talk of, well, you know, I don't look right. I don't dress right. We all have a different image to portray. As long as it's professional, you don't have to look like the lady next to you. You just need to look polished. And that's your polish, your form of polish. Don't compare yourself to others. Be your own person, but be your best own person. I love that. I love that. And that's definitely a a big point and a valid point is just like with success, you don't have to, what you define as success is what you define as successful for yourself. And what somebody else may define as success, you may not have any desire to have, be, or do that. So Mm -hmm. like you said, with the image and you're polished, It's based on being authentic to yourself and whatever your brand is and whatever you want to carry out. And that also goes kind of into like the naysayers and Mm -hmm. competing with others, going with the Joneses, all of that, which is not necessary because I always Mm. tell people, you have something about you that makes you unique. And that is why your tribe is your tribe is because whatever that little secret sauce it is or your swag or whatever, that is Mm -hmm. what makes you special. And that's what draws people to you. And, 
you need to focus on that instead of being ashamed of it or try to hide it. Bring that to light because that is your strength. That is your uniqueness. So I love how you touched on that point about being your polish, not how somebody else looks, but how you feel comfortable and how you look. And I think the other two key things that I try to stress to my clients is, you know, fear is a natural emotion. So it's not like fear is going to go away, but you have to learn how to use it or diminish it. So you can use fear as your fuel to just make you more comfortable and powerful. I know it sounds strange, but you can do that. And also emulate skill and not person. So someone, you may notice something about something that someone does and how they do it. And that's like, you know what? That, I like how she, you know, uses her hands when she talks about this or how she makes eye contact um, with certain people when she gets to specific points because those are the people that she's really trying to influence. So emulate that type of thing, but not the person. Mm-hmm. Some very good points. Very, very good points. With the people who you coach, What do you see is the hardest thing for people to overcome? Oddly enough, it is getting rid of the negative self-talk, but it's also just actually realizing your own strengths. A lot of people really don't know what their strong points are. They, we hone in so much on our weaknesses and how are we going to fix those that we're not clear about what we are really strong and capable of doing easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people push through that and with the neg, especially the negative thoughts, because the negative thoughts is like connected to Mm self-esteem and self-confidence. How do you help people push through those negative thoughts? So it's definitely still doing an assessment and and going back to decide to decipher how much of that is valid. Is it valid based on just because you've only heard it your whole life? You, you just caught onto that one thing and you've held it your whole life, but are you actually this. Mm -hmm. So something along the lines of you may have heard your whole life. Well, you know, she's a tomboy. Are you really a tomboy or is that something you were labeled and you just latched onto it and you held it for your entire life? So when I look at you and I see you dressed up and you look very professional and feminine to me, you don't look like a tomboy, but you have that image in your head that you are. So now we have to shift what you see in the mirror. So we do a lot of looking at yourself and we don't like self-evaluation, but, you know, it comes down to videotaping yourself to see how you actually look when you present. So you'll know how you're using your hands, your body, your voice, um, just how you're showing up. You can actually see how you're dressed and if that looks distracting or if you look polished or you look disheveled or disconnected. Um, And it's also just using positive affirmations. You have to start telling yourself the thing that you want to become or the thing that you already are and you just didn't realize that you are. So if you are a polished presenter or a powerful presenter, now you have to start telling yourself that every day, I am a polished presenter. And you tell yourself this literally every day. You record yourself saying that because your brain is going to now shift to hearing and saying, yeah, that that's me. You're going to recognize that. And So I'm sitting here thinking about what you're saying about pretty much authenticity being your version of polish, um, the negative self-talk, branding, all of this stuff is going through my head Mm because I hear this a lot and because I'm in the coaching industry as well. I'm an entrepreneur as well. So we hear about branding and representing your brand. So my question is, how do you distinguish between how people may look at you as far as being polished and professional and what you may consider being authentically you. Um, I I consider that, you know, a perception issue. So how do you perceive yourself? Number one, and then you're, you're looking at how you think you're perceived by others. And then you're trying to see what doesn't match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you're going from there to decide, well, are those things that I even want to change about myself? Sometimes you find out something and you're like, well, that's not really a big deal to me and I don't want to change it. And you don't because no one is saying that you have to morph yourself into something that someone else wants you to be. You still have to be comfortable in your own skin. And the perception is if you want them to now start seeing you as this confident, 
um, memorable person, then you have to start carrying yourself that way. So you're going to have to start entering the room and exuding confidence. You have to show that in the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you use your your hand gestures, the way you look at people, even in the way you communicate written. You have to just shift how you say things. You can't say it with a question and a doubt. You have to say it with a period on the end, like this is what I'm saying. Got it. So pretty much be true, be true to your own self. So whatever Mm -hmm. you feel is unique to you, be confident in that. And whenever you walk into a room or whenever you approach somebody, they will feel that they will see that they will hear it and they will latch onto that. So even when if if other people, the naysayers or other people, the crowd is telling you, okay, you need to do this or you should look like this or you should put on this or you should blah, blah, blah come back to your, your, your happy place, your confident place and say, okay, do I take this advice? Is this going to help me excel? Or is this completely out of alignment with who I am and my brand or my persona? Or should I take some aspects of it and filter it into whatever it is that I do? Because I know that's a big thing. We always talk about branding. In our industry, we always talk about branding, 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 wearing your brand colors, your brand is you, um, being mm-hmm. authentic. And I know my for myself even, I've had a little bit of conflict with that um, by listening to people who I do look up to, who are mentors and coaches to me. And I pushed back a little bit and I've, sat back and thought about it. And I'm like, but this is me and this is who I am. And, but I, I heard it so much that I'm like, okay, should I consider it? Should I think about it or should I just leave it alone? (laughs) (laughs) Because like you said, when I decide to do something, especially when it comes to my brand, because I am my brand, my brand is me. It's all intertwined. I think about my message, who I'm talking to, how I want them to perceive me. And then if I feel comfortable, like you mentioned earlier, if I feel comfortable, then I go for it. Versus if I was to change something, I would, I would mess up somewhere because I'd be worried about being somebody else versus being me. I think about, think about David and Goliath and how, People were giving little David all of this armor to wear to go fight the big giant. Mm. And it came down to him saying, you know, I I got all this stuff. I can't even move. He's used to his slingshot and he got rid of everything that was not, you know, what he was used to dealing with and what he was Mm. used to using to accomplish his goals. And once he did that, what did he do? He slayed the, the giant. So you have to use what you're comfortable with. You may be able to enhance it but you can't just totally morph yourself into something and then you don't even know who you are anymore oh I love it I love it I have to remember that that story and how you just told it whenever I have those (laughs) whenever I have those (laughs) negative thoughts coming in my mind I because I really love that and many of us if not all of us know that story Mm -hmm. and that that's that's huge just work in our comfort zone. But when we talk about comfort zones, I know another thing that is said is success is right outside of your comfort zone. So I know there's times that you have to stretch yourself and step outside of your comfort zone. So how would, how would you advise somebody who's on that fence of, okay, this is out of my comfort zone. How do I tell if it's something good and something I should explore or if, if I should leave it alone altogether. Right. How would you, I know Well, video has, has always been the funny thing that, that I um, use with my clients because I say to them, have you ever seen yourself on video? And Mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, Oh no, I can't tape myself. You know, I don't want anybody to do that. (laughs) And when they have to watch it or, you know, we're watching it together, 
the, the um, you know, reactions. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that that's what I do. And I said, that's why we're watching it, because we are so not in tune with a lot of things that we do often. So I say now that you know how you're coming across, you know, how does that make you feel? So, you know, what do you want to change? And that's uncomfortable because now they've really seen themselves and, and they're having mixed messages. Well, I had the messages already of what I thought was going on. Now I actually see what's going on and, ooh, now what do I do? So mm-hmm. it becomes a very interesting conversation because ultimately, yeah, you have to get a little uncomfortable in order to make some, um, I would say, headway. But it doesn't have to be something that's detrimental where the person is just, you know, after it's all said and done they're hyperventilating because we've made too much of a change. It has to still be something that you feel that, okay, if I make this tweak, I'm still going to be okay. And if they can reap one small reward from that one change, it'll just help them to do the next thing and the next thing. Cause you have to celebrate the small successes as well as the large ones. Yes. So true. So true. So I know in the questions I asked you, I'm not sure if you got the questions, but I know I like I to did. ask, what is a book? And I want to say for women entrepreneurs, other women entrepreneurs are those who you would coach. So anybody who wants to hone in on their presentation skills or anybody who's even in corporate America, what is a book that you would recommend to them? There is a book that I read. I don't even remember how long ago it was, but it's called Knockout Presentations. And it was actually a really good book. I was able to meet the author in person at some type of um, conference that I attended. And it's really concise in how it's written. It's very easy to follow. But it gives good um, points on holistically, not just the presentation material itself, but just as I was speaking of body language, tone of voice, and some other things. I think that's a really good book. Another book that's not necessarily geared towards presentation, but I know that he's an excellent storyteller, would be Show Up For Your Life. Ooh, I love the title. Is, um, the, the author is Andy Henriquez, and it's an amazing book because he's telling, of course, of many experiences that he's had from going from um, corporate to entrepreneurship and you know how we talk ourselves out of our dreams or goals or let other people do it. And it was just helpful for me because I read it while I was, you know, trying to, to get things off the ground for my own business. And sometimes I go back just to see some of the exercises or the stories that um, he shared. So both of those books, I think, would be very beneficial. And those are new books. I have not heard of either one of them. So I'm definitely going to check Knockout, them out. Yeah, Knockout's probably been out. She, she may be actually on her second version, second volume of the book. But Show Up probably just came out last year. Okay, okay. Definitely love the title, Show Up for Your Life. That that speaks volumes, just mm-hmm. that sentence or that title alone speaks volumes. Because you got to show up for yourself before yeah. you can show up for anybody else. Mm-hmm. So what is a quote that you live by? This quote stays on my wall and... I have um, searched the internet high and low and cannot find um, who wrote it. So I always just say anonymous, but it's life is short, live it. Love is rare, grab it. Anger is bad, dump it. Fear is awful, face it. Memories are sweet, cherish them. Good piece of advice. And you have not found who wrote it yet? No, every time I I Google and do a search, it just comes up anonymous. So maybe the person just didn't want to share their name. Hmm. They should have. <laughs> yeah, they should. Cause it's it's should been have. on my board for like two years. <laughs> yes. Yes. Any last piece of advice you want to give to women out there, women entrepreneurs, let's say that out there that may be listening. Don't get stuck. It's okay to ask for help because you don't have to do it alone. There are a lot of people who can help you and every person that helps is, is there is not a cost associated with it. Will people will help you. Um, with some basic questions or share experiences and it doesn't have to be like a paid relationship. I think people get caught up in, well, if I ask her, she's a coach and and she's not going to tell me because that's what she does for a living. There are things that people will share that does not cost you anything. And 
don't become a, an addict of the free university. You can get tons of information <laughs> <laughs> online. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you do really need some type of um, formal training from, from the person or people who truly are doing what it is you're interested in doing or have walked that walk and can now talk the talk. So training is key. You can okay. always learn. Okay, and time for a shameless plug. So go ahead and plug yourself, names of your programs, your books, and how to contact you. Okay. Well, um, again, my book is titled Resilient on Purpose. It is available on Amazon.com or on my website, ShaniceMCollins.com. Uh, let's see. My main coaching program would be Passport to Ooze Confidence, as you mentioned earlier, and that's a 12-week program. But I also have so many courses that are about four weeks. So I have one called Passport to Powerhouse Presentations that I've just recently launched. And you can get in touch with me via the website, uh, ShaniceMCollins.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at, at Shanice or at Coach Shanice. I'm sorry, at Coach Shanice. And I also um, can be found on Facebook on a business page or under Coach Shanice. So thank yeah. you so much. Do you have any last words before we end? This was great. Um, I, I was looking forward to us speaking and finally getting together. And I know that uh, we played tag. So I'm just glad that <laughs> we were able to connect and that you are using this platform to help other people share their message. That, that is really wonderful. So I appreciate you offering up this opportunity to me. And thank you for taking advantage of the opportunity. Thank you for speaking with me. Thank you for what you do, because I love it. I love your your brand. <laughs> I love um, about, you know, how you talk about presentations. And it's a lot more to that, like you said, than just PowerPoint. Or it's even more than just speaking as like a public speaker Right. Like people would think it's so much yeah. in presenting you, presenting yourself. And I think well, that's... I think we just I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, we we fail to remember that we give many presentations every day. Anytime mm -hmm. you are in a grocery store and you have a conversation with someone, mm -hmm. they're evaluating you. You're presenting yourself to them and they're deciding if they want to continue the conversation or not when you're with your children and, and talking to either their teacher or, you know, a sporting event, you're presenting when you go to church, of course, when you go to work. So you're always presenting yourself and we don't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you so, so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. You too. And I will definitely be in touch with you soon. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. You too. Bye. You've been listening to the Veteran Woman Podcast. If you want to connect with Ariel and let her know what you thought of today's show, be sure to head over to www.theveteranwoman.com and follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Veteran Woman.